All right, we're rolling. Uh, okay, so let's summarize um, these factors that affect rate first. How do we feel about the factors that affect rate? Anyone want to launch in? Should be super confident about this. Yes, you are. Um, they increase the rate automatically. They all increase the rate. We're all happy with that? Yeah. We, we could go into details, and lots of you have, which is amazing. So, increased temperature increases rate because more particles have energy greater than or equal to the activation energy. Increasing concentration because there's increased collision frequency. Same for pressure. Surface area, because there's more particles available to collide, which again increases collision, uh, collision frequency. And adding a catalyst, of course, reduces the activation energy, which allows many more particles to have successful collisions. OK, so, so we, we know all that. That's fine. Um, I haven't written all of that stuff in the, in the tables. Lots of you have, because you're brilliant. OK, um, equilibrium, slightly more tricky, because we need to give a kind of guiding principle now. So increasing temperature and equilibrium, what's that principle we take into the room with us when we're, when we're doing that? Matthew, you mentioned that, that so why don't you? It's the endothermic direction. Okay, so we look at the equilibrium, we look at the reaction, we identify the endothermic reaction, increase in temperature will shift in the endothermic direction. Have I done these one at a time? That would be really helpful. Yes, I have. Okay. So shift in the endothermic direction. Again, that's what you take into the exam. That might not be what you write down. You might say the forward reaction is endothermic, so it'll increase the yield of products or whatever it is. But that, that's your guiding principle, okay? That's what you're going to learn. Uh, increasing concentration of a reactant. What do you think, Josh? Um, the equilibrium shifts to side to side to contrast the... Brilliant. You've given me some Le Chatelier detail in there. Yeah, it's going to shift to the right or shift towards the products or increase the yield of products to remove that constraint to use up the extra reactants. That's great. Increase in pressure. Again, it depends on the reaction. But what's our guiding principle? And shifts in the direction of fewer moles. That's right. We look at both sides of the equation, see which one has fewer moles of gas. It shifts to the side of the fewer moles, so that's increase in pressure. And of course, if we reverse those, if we decrease in temperature, that shifts in the exothermic direction. If we decrease the concentration, it shifts to the left, and so on. We can we can reverse all of those. Um, just be aware: increase in pressure is the same as decrease in volume. If I take a gas in a large container and I squeeze it into a smaller container. I've increased its pressure, but I've just phrased it differently. Increase in pressure is the same as decrease in volume. Or alternatively, I could take a gas that's squeezed into a small container and release it into a big one that would drop its pressure. Okay. Uh, surface area and catalyst, effect on equilibrium? Nothing. Not much, uh, though we just mentioned um, adding a catalyst helps an equilibrium reach that equilibrium position faster, but it doesn't actually affect the equilibrium position itself. Okay. Let's bring in our good old friend, the Harbour process. Um, helps to have a real example on the page. Um, so, how does an increase in temperature affect Kc? Well, obviously, it'll depend on the reaction, because some reactions are exothermic and some are endo. Um, but... Uh, you, you had your hand up. What were you going to say? It will. 
Okay, let me just pop Kc on the board here so it's concentration of ammonia squared, concentration of N2, concentration of H2 cubed. Okay, so if we increase temperature, do you want to just talk us through it? And the position of the equilibrium will shift before the end of the phase of the nuclear reaction. So on your roof, sir. So just cut out the word favours, please. AQA doesn't like the word favours. Shifts in V. Um, endothermic direction. That's our guiding principle. Which is V. Okay, so that's the reverse reaction. All right, so I'm just, just kind of making this really clear because this is a very common AQA question. How does temperature affect Kc? And people often get it upside down, or literally, with Kc. Um, so let's just be really clear. Increasing temperature, it's an exothermic reaction. So the equilibrium position will shift to the left. We'll get more reactants, less products. Everyone happy there? More reactants, less products. So, more of this stuff, and less of that stuff, means that gets bigger, that gets smaller. If that gets bigger, that gets smaller than Kc. Okay, so we have to look at the reaction equation, but in general, if it's an endothermic reaction, Kc is going to increase. If it's an exothermic reaction, Kc is going to decrease. So we have to look at each equation. But quite often you would have you would have done this kind of question already. You know, it's one of those structured questions where they'll say, what's the effect on K, uh, what, what's the effect on equilibrium position if we change the temperature to, you know, 298 Kelvin or whatever, and then what will be the effect on Kc? Okay. Everyone all right with that? Th this is one of the, the trickier questions in, in AQA. The, the, the next one, however, is even trickier. What happens if I change the concentration of a reactant? Straight in there. Go on. I don't know if there's the same effect, but that's the same effect that it does here because we're increasing the concentration of the equilibrium of the shift to the line of the reactant side, so that's also the increasing effect. Oh, I see. So, so, it cancels, so the changes. So the changes will cancel, cancel out. out. Okay, that's a nice way of thinking about it. What were you going to say? Okay, so we've got increase, no change. Okay, well, we've got all three answers then. That, that's marvellous. Um, let's just hold that thought and think about pressure. How will pressure affect Kc? Let's say I increase the pressure of this reaction. I like the way you've given us the guiding principle. Equilibrium shifts to the side with fewer moles, so that's going to be the right. And then more of this and less of that. I, I just point this out because sometimes this can be a little bit confusing. It's important to remember at this point that Kc is a constant. Kc is a constant. Now it is affected by temperature, as a lot of constants are, but Kc is constant at a given temperature. So nothing else affects it. Now I have to say... When I'm thinking about concentration, like, like you were, kind of reasoning it out, and even worse, pressure, I think surely if you increase the pressure, you get more of that and less of that, so that's bigger and that's smaller, so Kc should go up. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. The maths says no. If you don't understand the maths, then that, that's not the maths problem. It's a you problem. And it's a me problem as well, because I can't really make sense of that in my head, apart from the fact that if, you, if, you're, changing, uh, if you're changing pressure, then 
you're changing other things as well. It's very hard to change pressure and not change temperature and not change concentration and all the other things that are going to change because of that. So that kind of makes sense in my head, but it's a bit of a cheat really. And, and maybe, I don't know, maybe if I post this on YouTube and some kind chemistry professor will come on the comments below and explain it to me, but I've never quite made sense of it except to learn that Kc is constant at a given temperature. Concentration, pressure, and catalyst surface area do not affect Kc. Okay, that's just the way it is. So that's a very common question, and it trips people up because they will structure it, right? Again, the same with the temperature, they'll structure it. They'll say, how does pressure affect the equilibrium position? And you all go into Le Chatelier mode, and you say, well, we'll have more product because that's the side with fewer moles of gas. And then it'll say, how does that affect Kc? And you'll, you know, you'll plug that in, and <laughs> you're wrong. Okay, it's almost like a trick question, so be aware of that. Um, okay, so summary there, equilibrium constant is constant at a given temperature. In other words, Kc is unaffected by any changes to anything else other than temperature. Um, for an exothermal reaction, as we saw here, increase in temperature shifts the equilibrium position to the left, which will decrease Kc. But apart from that, KC ain't changing. <laughs>